Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining. My name is Tracy Cook, and I'm the online media manager for modernanalyst.com, the premier community for business analysts. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar entitled Minimum Detail Requirements, Maximum Requirement Detail. Today's webinar will last approximately 60 minutes, including the question and answer session at the end. Please be sure to submit your questions in advance using the questions feature of the GoToWebinar software. Today's featured speaker is Dan Tasker, author, consultant, business analyst. Dan is the author of two books and numerous articles. He retired in 2019 after working and consulting in the IT industry for 48 years. His first 10 years was spent working as a developer, called program, programmer back then, in the United States and Canada. This was followed by two years teaching computer programming, database design, and data modeling. Hello, Dan. Welcome. Hi, Tracy, and welcome to everyone. Thanks for joining. Right, so uh, this is webinar two in a three webinar series. And in the first webinar, we were looking at uh, high level requirements. So uh, I had a slide what the problem of high level requirements were. I was just gonna run through those very quickly for anyone who didn't attend the first webinar. So the first problem we saw was a lack of guidelines as to what is and isn't high level. The second problem, a lack of good examples. So what we presented in that webinar was uh, five fundamental capability types for information systems. The scope of uh, the requirements we're talking about are all for information systems. So those capability types were user interface, report, data import, data export, and automated functions. So those are the five types. We'll see those again in today's webinar. And for good examples, uh, to address that problem, we introduced the TRIPSRU case study. So we'll be uh, following up on the examples from that case study in today's webinar, and that case study is available uh, for people to look at uh, outside of this. There's a link uh, at uh, at the end of the webinar, but if you didn't happen to attend the first one, it's available on YouTube, on uh, Modern Analyst web, uh, Modern Analysts uh, area on YouTube, and this is a link to it. You can uh, catch that, catch up with that anytime you want. Okay, so moving on. First of all, the objectives of the overall three-part series. We want better requirements for information system-based solutions. So we'll carry the theme from webinar one. We're not talking about uh, requirements for physical products, for uh, control systems, that sort of thing. This is, we're talking about information-based systems. The reason for that is that's how I spent my career. So that's what I have to offer uh, insights into that. For this webinar, our objective is to demonstrate structured requirement details, okay, for a capability-based requirement, again, for an information system. So what we want to look at is the, those five capability types again, and we want to look at requirement details. So the agenda, fairly straightforward. Uh, we'll have some intro slides. I'm going to talk about what we mean by requirement details as opposed to detailed requirements, a little uh, tricky there. Then we're going to look at examples of requirement details, uh, again, from the case study, and we've got a few wrap-up slides. So that's how we'll spend probably the next 45 minutes and leave time for questions from you. Right, so big question, the problem with detailed requirements little similar to uh, high-level requirements, lack of guidelines. But this time, it's for how much detail there should be, all right? And the, another problem is trying to represent lots of requirement detail using textual statements. So we see that as a problem. We're going to address that. What we often see people talk about, oh, well, we have hundreds of requirements. That always worries me, okay? Are they single sentence requirements, shall statements? Is that why? Because there are hundreds of details that you have hundreds of requirements or 
I don't know, just going crazy. What we often see is not single statements, but we see detailed requirements that are run on descriptions. When I say run on, it can be a long sentence, it can be a paragraph. I've seen a detail requirement run for two pages in text. So I've got a little example for you here. I found uh, on the web, it was supposed to be a detailed requirement. It says the login email address must be unique and during account registration, if the email address provided by the customer is already used in the system, then the customer must be notified about it. So this is an example of not a shell statement, a run on description in a single requirement, but is it really a single requirement? Because it's about a number of things. So this is an example of the problem. And so the third problem, as with high level requirements, a lack of good examples of detailed requirements or requirement details. So that's what we'll try to address today, those three problems. Assumptions for today's webinar. Okay, um, some of the assumptions come out of webinar one. We're going to uh, assume that we're in a project, a managed project that's going to deliver an information system-based solution. So we want requirements, basically. In webinar one, we talked about uh, Agile and what that meant and change management. Uh, this is going to be a full-blown project, project manager. There'll be a requirements phase, a design phase, that sort of thing. So that's an assumption that we're making. The second assumption is that the details we're going to discuss are for a capability-based high-level requirement which means uh, we're going to get details for uh, one of the types of requirements we talked about in webinar one, not the type of requirement I just read to you there. We don't wanna discuss that forever and get further detail or split that out. Okay, so we're going to discuss one user interface or one report or one data import that we have a high level requirement for. So these are the five capability types that we presented in webinar one, and we will be dealing with those same five capability types today. And the other assumption is that we have one or more subject matter experts available to discuss that detail. So all the detail we're talking about comes from a subject matter expert. Again, webinar one talked about the importance of having such a person. And this, um, Slide was in webinar one also, just to sort out what's not in scope, requirement solicitation details. I use the term discuss details. That can be any elicitation technique that anyone wants to use that finds useful. Uh, that doesn't make a difference in how you get the details, but it's the details we're trying to get. Okay, we're not talking about non-functional requirements, which these days are, tend to be called quality of service requirements for the whole system. Okay, we're not talking about the system needs to be available up uh, this much time. That's out of scope. If the uh, business needs to improve their processes before they implement a new solution, uh, that's out of scope. That's a separate exercise. Uh, usability and user experience in general for a system, again, that's out of scope. A given user interface or a given report, how usable that is, that's in scope. But um, if you need user experience for your whole system, you need to uh, spend extra effort for that. We won't be talking about that. And lastly, this concept of stakeholder management. I said a minute ago, we need a subject matter expert that needs to be managed. You need access to those people. One of the reasons we want to gather all the detail is those people are hard to get. If you don't get the detail up front, you'll find you halfway through your project, you suddenly need that. You need to get a hold of your subject matter expert again, so you're chasing these people. So that's why we want to focus on getting all the detail up front. So the big question for today, how much detail are we talking about? 
So when we talked about high-level requirements in webinar one, the answer was simple, no details. Okay, just identify the report you need, identify the business activity you want a user interface for, and who needs it, and you're done. There's your high-level requirement, nothing further. We take that high-level requirement, we want to discuss the detail, how much uh, detail do we want, and the answer is simple again. We want all the details. Now, it may sound like this is going to take forever. Good news is it's not, especially if we structure the approach to getting those details. So we structure that by looking at three kinds of details, what we call element level details, individual data items on a report or on a screen, uh, the individual labels on the screen, we want that level of detail. We call that element level detail. Second kind is groupings of elements. Okay, there are details about groups of elements. We'll talk about that in this 45 minutes and see why that's important. And thirdly, there are details about the whole capability and we'll see some examples of that. So we want all of the elements, we want all of the groups, we want all of the details applying to a specific capability. That's what we're targeting. One more thing we would like is some visual aids in this process. When I said it doesn't take forever to get all this detail, if you have a subject matter expert, you can put together the visual aids, you use these visual aids to work through these things and it goes very quickly. Okay, so that's how much detail we want. Let's look at these three kinds of detail uh, specifically. So let's start with that element level detail and we'll use our five capability types. So if we're talking about a report, the kind of element level detail we want, first of all, we want every field, every data field. So I've got this sort of generic invoice here. Um, what I uh, highlighted in red here are data fields. So here's a invoice number, here's a date of issue, here's a table of line items. So there'll be a product name here, there's some data fields, okay, and some others. We want those, those that's one type of detail for a report. The second type are the labels, okay? The fact that this is an invoice, this label on the, for the invoice number, these labels at the head of this table, okay? We really want this. Sounds like a lot, but we're gonna get there, okay? If we're doing a user interface, User interface is similar to a report in that there's visible data fields, there are visible labels, we want all of that detail. User interface has another element type we don't see on reports and that's because user interfaces can have actions. So you can have a save button, you can have a cancel button. Each of these is an element of a user interface. We wanna know something about that, okay? If we don't capture detail about that element, how does that get in your final solution? All right, for data import and data export capabilities, what were the elements we're looking for is what data is needed. So for an import, what data is needed by the system? So it's the uh, data elements that we expect to get imported from the external source. The need for an export, the need is external. So somebody wants some data, okay, what elements do they expect? So we want to be able to know each of those elements, again, to deliver it as part of the export. Our friend automated function, here we are, an automated function, it doesn't take data in, it doesn't take data out of the system, but it uses data that the system has available to it. So what we wanna know is all the data it needs, all the data it needs to reference, all the data it updates, all the data it uh, generates. Okay, again, this sounds like a lot, but when we structure it and we have our uh, visual aids, we'll go through it quickly. We're gonna see examples of this. We also want for automated functions, okay, we're gonna ask the computer, we're gonna ask a developer to develop an automated function that's going to do something that would normally have been done by a person. So what we want is, the steps that that person would take to do this. We want it for two reasons. 
One is we give these steps to the designers and the developers, and they can go ahead and create the function any way they want. The other people that need these steps are the testers, because to test an automated function, you have to be able to manually create um, what needs to go on. So to have those business-oriented steps uh, available is part of the detail we want. Okay, so those are all the element details. We will show you some examples of those. Don't be afraid if it sounded like a lot. Element group, what we mean by an element group, okay, if we're looking for at a report or a user interface, okay, here's that invoice thing again, there are business meaningful collections of elements, okay? So I've highlighted some things that are groups of elements, okay? What we knew, need to find these areas are these mockups. I mentioned mockups were important, okay? If you have that original mockup, you can start to draw lines or boxes around groups, okay? So uh, in a user interface or report, these are mockup areas. Okay, and again, you want to cover all of them before you're done. Moving on to uh, importing and exporting, we talked about elements of data. Okay, we don't see those, but importing, you actually import a file, and that file has one or more record types. So the elements that are coming in, if it's a simple import, there's only one record type, okay, that's easy, it's one record, it's all the elements that are coming in. Same for going out. Okay, so uh, you want to get all these fields out. Those are grouped either in one record or multiple types of records. For the automated function, I remember I said that it's the system managed data. So again, those fields, the system managed fields are managed in system managed records. So we want to, we group those uh, elements as system managed records and those steps. Okay, remember all those steps? If this were a use case, you'd see steps grouped into paths. You, whether you use a use case or not, you can, uh, I have an example where we use uh, a use case for an automated function. You don't have the user and the system, everything, the system's doing everything. It's actually this diagram, but here are the steps in the happy path, okay? So I'm grouping these into the happy path group. Here is a set of steps in one of the alternate paths. Here is the one step taken in one of the exception paths. So here is an example of group level detail for an automated functions. And we'll look at what group level detail is in a minute, okay? So these are the kinds of group level, uh, what we mean by group level for uh, the five different capability types. Okay, moving on to whole capability detail. What do we mean by whole capability detail? Well, the best ex, uh, explanation is examples. So we'll look at those five capability types again. If it's a user interface, a type of capability is the availability, okay, of this specific user interface, not a non-functional requirement for the whole system. How often do you want the system to be up? How often does this particular interface need to be up. That's an example of a detail for a capability, a, u, a particular user interface. For the report, an example of capability level, you've got a specific report. What do you do if there's no data to report at a particular time you run this report? Do you produce the report, okay, and say there's no data, or you just not bother anyone? They only give them the report if there's data for them to see. That's piece of information, a detail we want from our subject matter expert about a given report. Okay, moving on to data import, the example of something that applies to the whole capability is an error action. So you've got a file of records, they're coming in, a particular import, and one of the records has, fails um, its, um, it's, uh, it's got invalid data in it. The options are you can stop the import, don't go any further, this import file's got data, get it fixed and then start over, that's one option. The other option is, okay, for this particular data import, if you hit an error, flag it, keep going. 
So we want to know from the subject matter expert for a particular data import, which way do you expect it to go? So here's an example of a capability of a detail that applies to the whole capability. Data export, simple example. Do you want to encrypt the data that's going out in the file or not? I won't babble about that. That applies to the whole file, all the records, all the data. And finally, an automated function. You've got the system doing a batch job, processing a thousand records uh, and in the middle of the night. Do you need some kind of report out from that execution that shows you what it did? Did it produce a thousand records? Did it produce 2,000 records? That is a detail about an automated function, the whole automated function. Okay, so that's what we mean by whole capability detail. All right, so let's move on to visual aids. What do we mean by visual aids? Reports and user interface, a mock-up. And we looked at this uh, invoice as an example of a mock-up. Uh, same with the uh, user interface. You want screen mock-ups. They, they speed this process. Okay, and uh, what we do when we have the mock-up, we use that to do our area map. So we take a mock-up and we scribble on it or however you want to do this uh, to find your areas. Okay, for the data import and export, as, as I said, when you have more than a single record, you want to visually uh, represent the structure of that data. So we have this record hierarchy diagram. I'll chat about this later and uh, There'll be more details of what that is. You either have or haven't seen this kind of diagram, but it's a very simple uh, visual aid. Okay, for the automated function, again, if you're dealing with complex system managed records, you want to use a hierarchy diagram. And the diagram I showed you earlier is actually a standard UML activity diagram to allow you to represent individual steps and decision points and that sort of thing. So those are uh, 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 visual aids that aid us in capturing the details we want. If we have these visual aids, it's uh, a matter of working through them to capture all the detail. All right, so that's what we mean by requirement details. If you're still with us, don't be scared. Uh, we're going to an example to make this look hopefully doable. Okay, so for an example, we will take an example from the TRIPSRU case study. We saw these high-level requirements last time. We'll use the high-level requirement for a report. This is from a, a, a report high-level requirement. A self-service customer shall be able to print their booking confirmation details. Okay, so we're going to discuss the details of this high-level requirement with a subject matter expert. Assumption said we had one of those, and we're going to take the output from that discussion, the details that the subject matter gets, uh, gives us, and we're going to take those details and we're going to structure them. We're not going to write textual statements to capture all of them. We're going to use a spreadsheet, okay? An Excel based template, we're going to look at that. Uh, we've got some templates that are designed to capture details for a report, all right? So uh, the visual aids, we have a report mock-up of this particular report. We're not gonna use that invoice I showed you. And we have a real example of a area map for this um, example, all right? This is not, this report, this uh, booking confirmation details is not a simple report. There were 48 data elements and 19 labels. Okay, there are six report areas and there are 13 uh, details, whole level capabilities out of 27 possible um, details for a report. Okay, so that's, this is the example we're gonna go through in the next 10 or so minutes. We're not gonna go through all of that detail, but examples of um, each, each type. All right, <clears throat> excuse me while I get a little drink here water. Okay, the example visual aids we have for this specific example, here's our mock-up. So this is a 
booking confirmation report. Uh, this is the Trips or UK study was airline reservation. So they've made a booking. They've booked a round trip. So we're seeing uh, this is one leg of the flight and there were three passengers. So here are their tickets. Here's the second flight. And here is what they're being charged for that. So their confirmation has cost them this much money. So this is an example mock-up. Given this mock-up, uh, we were able to draw the areas. So I said there were six areas, here they are. We'll look at a couple of these in detail, but there's a header area, there's a footer area because this is a multiple page report, and then here's where we uh, divvy up those detail elements. Okay, this report, we don't have a record hierarchy diagram, but I wanted to show you an example of that because in the case study, the data import capability actually where all of this data for this report came from, this was imported into the system uh, when we made the booking. They picked their flights, they said, okay, I wanna book them. They went out and booked it and all of this booking information came back and was stored in the system, available for use by this report. So I just wanna take time to show you what that structure would look like, okay? So at the top of the structure is the booking, and that's where the booking number came from. It was imported from the, where we made the booking. And here are all the individual flights that uh, have been booked. And for each flight, we, we were given a ticket number for each of the passengers, each of the travelers for each flight. And for each ticket, we have information about the traveler. So this is a visual aid uh, we're not necessarily using it in the report, but if you look at the example in the TRIPS or UK study, you'll see this um, record hierarchy diagram. Okay, so examples of detail. We're going to start with the whole capability details because uh, we have, we give you a set of predefined questions to ask the subject matter expert. So before we dive into element or group level detail, we say, look, can you answer these, can you give us details on these questions? So we said we're gonna structure that detail. We said it's gonna be in spreadsheets. It is, okay, so I said the template comes with a, a predefined set of questions. So you have a column uh, in your spreadsheet for the 27 types of questions you would ask a user about a report. And here's just a little uh, topic on those questions. What we uh, have actually is a set of questions for each different capability type. So these are the specific set for a report. I mentioned a user inter uh, a um, data import. This is uh, those set of questions that apply to uh, data import. We won't look at these, but I just wanted to show you they're slightly different but they're available, okay? So here's the rest of that structure. So here are the 27 questions and the spreadsheet has room for answers and here are the answers in this particular example. We're gonna pick three of these and look at them, okay? So uh, question number 13 in this set was about the orientation of the report. So we want the subject matter expert to identify if this report is oriented portrait, landscape or both okay this is not a, a killer question the subject matter expert said portrait great all right move on uh, question 16 file type identify the if the report is expected to be produced in a standard report file like a pdf so this particular example we're working through the the booking confirmation report yes they actually want it as in pdf form so there's uh, second of the 27 questions, when I said this doesn't take forever, easy peasy. Okay, here's another question, uh, generic question about reports. Are you going to mail the report? So if mailing of the report is an option, describe where the delivery address is taken uh, from and if it needs to fit within an envelope window area, if you can have a window envelope. Okay, so again, a detail for any report, okay? The good news for ours is it's not applicable, okay? We are not emailing this. So again, 27 questions, but this was not one of the 13 that had an actual uh, answer that we needed, okay? 
these are the details we're looking for for any report capability. Okay, they're all here. They're uh, templated. Uh, this is all of the questions for report. There is an equivalent template for each of the other four capability types. I showed you the data import. So that's what I wanted to show you in our 45 minutes is some examples of capability level detail. All right, let's move over to element group details. Okay, so again, we're going to structure that detail. Here is that um, area mapping I showed you, the example of our booking confirmation. So um, what we're going to do is we're, we have the visual aid in our spreadsheet. We're going to have a column where we number each area and we're going to give it a label. We saw we numbered each question and gave that a label. So in our um, in our mapping here, here's area number one and the label. You can include it on the mapping. This is all just done in PowerPoint. The details though, okay, for a group, we want to know its purpose. We want to know type of group. We want to know if a group is contained in other groups. And these are the critical questions. Uh, if there's data selection for that particular group, if that group needs the data sorted, and for reports, uh, if Pagination is an issue we want to know. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. Okay, area number three. This is our flight area. There's a purpose here. The type of area this is is a repeating group. Remember I said uh, this is a return, return trip, so we have a flight going out. This is leaving Auckland, going to San Francisco in this example and returning from San Francisco to Auckland. Okay, so a mock-up is nice. Okay, a mock-up should contain examples of every piece of group. Okay, this mock-up shows examples of two flights. Okay, but if this were a single uh, flight, if you were just going one way, do we do a mock-up showing one flight? The mock-up gives you an idea of what the report looks like, the structured detail tells you exactly, okay? Because we don't want to we don't want to talk about this twice. We want to say, hey, this uh, a flight repeats. So we've got an area of the report. However many flights you have, they are part of the report, okay? So that is the flights repeating area. And let's just look at a area containment, okay? So in this report, yes, we have an area where the flights are listed and within it we have uh, details of a flight. So the, this area type is fields. You can see their labels, their elements. Okay, this area is contained in area three and because it's contained in area three we've selected all of the flight details. We've, we're not sorting these fields and there's no pagination of uh, this section of the report because we're paginating at the flight level. Okay, so this is an example of two groups. Okay, here is structuring that detail. Given the mock-ups we have in the area, it's a matter of our subject matter expert answering questions about each of these. Okay, again, this does not take days. This takes minutes or hours to capture this detail when you have a subject matter expert. Okay, lastly, element level details. We're gonna structure those again. Um, we want uh, individually identified elements. So every element is going to have its own row in the database. And for our example, I just picked the header area out of our report. Okay, it has seven elements actually. We'll look at uh, what these are. Our spreadsheet. Like we saw before, we number each entry in our structure. We give it a label, okay? It turns out um, if the label is, um, sorry, we, we name the element, but if it's a label, we just use the label value. We'll see that, but the other stuff we wanna know, if we need to describe anything, we wanna know what area it's in, type, if it relates to any other elements, and if it's a system managed field. So let's look at some examples of that. 
the first element where we've got our subject matter expert, we've got our mock-up, we've got our area map, we, we're down to seven elements, let's look at them. So this is actually the heading of the report, okay? It's a fixed value, okay? So it's area text, it's in area one. It's not related to any other elements. It's not a data field. We're done. Move on. Okay. Our second element here is another label, the booking number. It's in area one. It's an element specific label. One of the reasons to capture these structured wise is the developer is going to go to the spreadsheet, copy this out, and paste it into the report they're building. Okay. You're going to get quality from that. If you just leave the mock up, uh, that they don't have access to, they're going to have to rekey that. It's it's a mess. Testers, here is a list of everything you're expected to see on the report listed out. Okay, again, another reason to structure the data. Okay, the third element is this actual data value here. So uh, this is element number three. We call it the booking number value. So anyone looking at this list, a no-brainer to find it in this mock-up. Okay don't need a description, it's a value reference. It uh, links, if you will, the related element is its uh, label. It does come from a system managed field, all of our data fields, not all of our data fields, but ones that do, okay? We'll talk about this uh, later. Right, let's move on. We won't look at the other seven reports, but here they are, all structured, okay? So here is an example of element level detail. All right, um, so what I've shown you here is these seven rows of that uh, template, that spreadsheet-based template. Here are the rest of the fields on that overall complex report. We won't look at these, but uh, you can download this spreadsheet and look at that, okay? You can see there are some descriptions here you'll want. There are a number of fields that the system manages. Okay, moving on. That was our detail example. Uh, the title of this webinar was Minimum Detail Requirements, Maximum Requirement Detail. So what we've been looking at is that maximum requirement detail. I haven't shown you a detail requirement. I'm not, I haven't shown you a textual, textual requirement. We're going to look at that right now. Okay, so we started with a high-level requirement. Here it is, this our report one, self-service uh, customer and our booking. We use that as the topic for discussion, however you want to elicit that, for our requirement detail. Okay, so all of our requirement detail was structured. We had uh, rows of whole capability details. We had rows of element group details. We had rows of element details. So what we've done is structure the requirement detail. Okay, what we want now is a single detail requirement. When I say minimum, one requirement to represent that detail, all of that detail. Okay, so what that, how that requirement might read textually is a self-service customer shall be able to print their booking confirmation report. That actually sounds just like our high-level requirement. It is because it represents all of the detail for this report, okay? And where all that detail lives, here is a shrunk down version of that spreadsheet. You can see here's my tab with the uh, questions. Here's where I can paste the mock-ups. Here's where the uh, area details uh, are listed, and here are the element details. Okay, so what we have is this requirement detail represented by all of the detail. It's This detail requirement is the context for that detail. Okay, this particular high-level requirement, because the self-service customer needs to be able to print it, they need a user interface to invoke this report. So same high-level requirement, but I've got a second detail requirement that says a self-service customer shall be able to request a copy of it. Okay, this is a user interface requirement, right? So what I actually want is a whole nother spreadsheet, okay, template, and this requirement will have uh, 
um, user interface questions, it will have user interface areas on its mock-up, it will have user interface elements and a button that says uh, print or produce, okay? So that's why we do want a detailed requirement. The good news is we don't need another high-level requirement, okay? Link both of those to that same, the reason they're there is they're supporting the same high-level requirement. These secondary detail requirements tend to be much simpler. It's not going to blow our uh, overall uh, size of the project to produce a simple screen to invoke a report. Okay, now, just when you thought you were done with detail, I said uh, system-managed fields. Okay, we haven't talked about some details of our data elements. Okay, the booking number, how big is it? You know, is it numeric? What are, what are the details? Because it's a system managed field, we actually don't want to specify the details for the report. System managed details, system managed fields apply across multiple reports, multiple user interfaces. Guess what? We have a whole nother webinar to talk about that detail. So the system managed fields we will talk about next time, all right? And when we talk about data reusability. Okay, good, let's move on to our wrap up. So requirements, details, and visual aids. That's what we've been talking about. The assumption was he had a subject matter expert. Well, how often don't we have a subject matter expert, all right? Well, we don't either don't have them because uh, we haven't managed our stakeholders properly, or there are such things and they won't let us use them, or we're just working in an area where the business doesn't actually know what they want. So what do we do? When I say we, there's a concept of iterative development. So you don't have the expert. We, we, we cannot get all the details up front. So the project says, okay, go ahead and develop the report, but expect to Re, do some redevelopment. So that needs to be factored into the project. Another way to uh, deal with not having a subject matter expert is use a prototyping tool. It's like iterative development, but you don't actually build it. You use a prototyping tool to uh, mock up things, to, to actively test things, mock up a report, have the users look at it, say, okay, let's fix the mock up. When the mock-up, when the prototype is all, when they're happy with it, then you turn it over to developers, okay? So that's a second way to get around not having a subject matter expert. What often happens is you don't do either of it. You gather whatever details you can from whatever stakeholders you have, and we end up with the swings, okay? This is my favorite cartoon. We won't go into the details, but all of these things represent not getting to what you actually wanted, all right? So the reason we have a subject matter expert, if we have them to gather the details we need, the details, okay, what we have is delivering what the subject matter expert wanted, okay? If we move this up to the front where we're doing requirements, if we had a mock-up that looked like that, okay, would we go through these steps? If we not only had the mock-up, but the details, the line items that represented all of that, would we go through this? Presumably not, okay? So, have we addressed the problems with detailed requirements? Okay, lack of guidelines for how much detail there should be. You've had the 45 minute version of this, of what elements are, element groups, whole level details, and visual aids, okay? So, that's how much detail we're looking for. Trying to resent, represent these as detail using textual statements. No, the text, we've structured the detail using spreadsheet-based templates, okay? Uh, the detail textual statements are just those very high-level capability ones. Spreadsheets are nice, but in an ideal world, we would have a requirements management tool or an application lifecycle tool that captured all of this detail, what we've been capturing in the in the spreadsheets, okay? Today's requirements management and application lifecycle management tools tend to give you a box, a text box, where you put description in, where you put those hundreds of statements and manage them, okay? The good news is 
most requirements management and application life cycles tools are extendable. Okay, you won't get a one of those tools off the shelf that will let you record all of these structured details. Okay, the good news is uh, if you want to structure these details, you can. I've proven that by taking three of those tools, taking those spreadsheets as prototypes, and mapping those, extending those tools to be able to support that. And then I proved it out by taking the examples and loading them into the tools. So here's one of those tools. Here is the case study example, okay, the report we've been looking at, the group level, remember the flights thing? It said it was repeating area. Here is it captured in a tool. Remember how flight details uh, pointed back at something? Because it's a tool, we have a link, not, a, not just an entry in a cable thing. It is possible. So all of this detail we're talking about, you don't necessarily have to use spreadsheets if you can have a tool, okay? And the lack of good examples, what I have for you is that Crips are you case study. We have uh, all of those examples, one for each of the five capabilities in spreadsheets, detailed examples. That's what I've got for you. All right, takeaway points. Number one, capability-based high-level requirements is a topic of discussion with subject matter experts. Capability-based detail requirements as the context, the one, what you link to all of those structured details, either in as a single spreadsheet or in a requirements management tool. And you want visual aids. You want those mock-ups. You want those maps. You want those diagrams. Okay. Webinar three, if you'd like to come back, we said guaranteed requirement usability, that's the title of it, you can roll in that. Its objective is to demonstrate reusability of structured details for information system managed data. That's the piece that I said uh, we're not gonna talk about today. We've run out of time, we're leaving you time for questions, okay? So come back to the third webinar in the series and we will talk about that. Okay, here are three links for you. The spreadsheet that had the detailed requirements for the report, I showed you that, all those lines. That's an Excel file you can download from uh, Modern Analyst website. Here's a link to that. The case study that talks about the high level requirements and the detail requirements, that's a PDF. Here's a link to that that's downloadable from Modern Analyst. And if, if 45 minutes wasn't enough, there's a series of articles uh, on Modern Analyst that talks about uh, all of this, including uh, the last article that talks about how to extend those spreadsheets into a tool. Okay, and with that, I'm ready to turn it back to Tracy to manage the questions. Thank you, Dan, for yet another great session. For those that are looking, I've actually also just posted those um, uh, those links right into the chat box. If you have any questions, you still have time to submit your questions by typing them into the questions box. Uh, Dan, we do have questions, so I'm going to jump right in. First, I'm not sharing my screen yet, uh, Tracy. My apologies, Hello. Dan. Let me make let me share your webcam. There you go. You just click on the little box. Okay, here we are. Thank you. Cool. Our first question, in which capability type would you put the requirements of interna internationalization and localization? For example, if a stored date has to be displayed in the user's time zone. Excellent question. That is a system-wide non-functional requirement. So if uh, your system, your your solution needs to be internationalized, every user interface, every report or uh, whatever interface or reports you need, need to meet that in, in internationalization. So that requirement is uh, at, the, at the system level. And now your developers, um, your designers and developers need to factor that in. Your business needs that capability, that's why it's uh, system level, give that to the designers, give that to the uh, developers and follow through with it, but you don't need to specify that at the capability level. 
Thanks, Dan. Uh, next question. Does the details requirement? Sorry, does the detail requirements collected by reporting analyst or by the business analyst require to go to the low level detail requirements? Somebody needs to go to the subject matter expert and get those details. So it depends on how you manage your project. If you've got multiple um, if you've got multiple business analysts and someone is specializing in the reports, you've got your high level requirement that says we need these five reports. So if you have a report business analyst, you send them with those five level requirements to the subject matter expert one at a time for each report and get those details. It should be a business analyst, okay? It's not a report analyst. If, if it's a report analyst, it's report analysts gathering those details. We need them up front. We need to know what fields for the report the system needs to manage. So you go out during the day, you come back at night, the BA team, and you correlate all those details. Okay, and I won't waffle on about the other capability types. But if you've got one BA on the system, one subject matter expert, it's the same one for everything. If you've got multiple BAs and one subject matter expert, you take turns. And if you've got multiple subject matter experts and multiple BAs, you split them up. Thank you, Dan. Our next question, do you add your textual requirements into the spreadsheet, spreadsheets, for example, report or UI one? Uh, yes, but not those spreadsheets. There's another spreadsheet template just for the requirements. So if you look at the uh, TRIPS or U case study, you'll see there is a separate spreadsheet. You put your high level requirements in there. You put your detail requirement statements in there. You can link your detail to the high level, okay? And you can in that spreadsheet add a column that says, hey, this detail requirement maps to this uh, spreadsheet file. If you have a requirements, capability, uh, requirements management tool, both those statements and that detail, if it's been extended, goes into the uh, the tool. So yes, separate statement for the textual requirements management statements. Thanks, Dan. And sorry, here's a follow-up. Is this process or documentation different for Agile? Yes. Um, go to uh, look at webinar one. I talk about the difference between requirements and statements in a project and what I call pure agile, where you're managing a backlog and delivering things every couple of weeks, okay? So you can be doing um, uh, agile-like, and that's where I say you have a managed project. You have a project manager, you have business analysts, your business requirements are, you're, you don't have a, a tame agile user that's there to give you that detail. So this, I've explained it all. Uh, you can, catch that in uh, webinar one another 45 minutes of your life hopefully not uh, ho hopefully well spent thank you Dan and next question uh, it seems you assume the visual aid is at hand when you start a licitation frequently this visual aid is what you have to create based on the information you elicited do you have a comment or a follow on that yeah that's that's a good question they're all good questions love this um, what you have started was the detailed discussion. So you, you are looking at one high-level requirement for one capability. Let's stay with the report. You've got a subject matter expert, okay? The, one of the first things you want is those questions answered, if you want to do that first. But you've got the subject matter expert before. So what I'm saying is you can do the questions first without a mock-up. Before you get into the areas or the elements you need those visual aids so the next thing you do with your subject matter expert is say hey if you don't have this mock-up already let's talk about this let's mock it up together you can do a hand-drawn one okay and go back uh, at the end of the day and and do it in powerpoint or whatever but you want that mock-up before you start to fill in the spreadsheet template with those line items of groupings or elements because that really drives that makes it happen so quickly okay that's the answer hopefully 
Thank you, Dan. And if anyone has any more questions, we just have a few minutes left. Uh, I just want to also let everyone know that I have posted Dan's next session, which is in December on the questions box. You can either grab that registration link and go to register now. You can go back to the modernanalyst.com website to register and see the full abstract. I'm also just pushing out right now in that questions box the website page to look at Dan's last session, so you can watch that as an archive. This session is uh, being recorded and also will be posted to the website within a few business days. And again, the links that Dan have, you are seeing right now, I have pushed them out through the questions box. If you're having an issue grabbing them, they're also going to be posted on his PDF of the presentation. Okay, and with if that, I have a minute. Have uh, Please, before go he ahead. runs, as I do have a minute, let me add one thing. Okay, this concept of putting the detail into spreadsheets. Okay, one of the things you need because you're not doing textual statements. Your typical users and even your project leaders say, okay, where are the requirements? They're expecting to see pages and pages of textual statements. We're trying to get away from that. You hopefully you see the advantage of structuring that and. We still have an answer to where are the requirements, okay? You can say here are a list of detailed requirements, okay? Here are these minimal things. He says, now, so I need this report. I need this user interface. I need this user interface to run this report. You've got a textual statement for each of those, okay? But where that detail lives is in a spreadsheet. So if you, because you're gonna need these details reviewed and, and and verified up front in your project, you need to get agreement from the stakeholders that they're not going to see hundreds of textual statements. We're gonna say, look, we're gonna do high level requirements. They're gonna be very high level. We're gonna do requirement statements, but when you wanna see the, the detail, that will be in spreadsheets. Now, the good news is, is business users are used to spreadsheets. That's not a foreign thing. And if you think of the time taking, you need to write hundreds of individual requirement statements or require or write a page and a half of a single requirement that's got bullet items of all those items. If that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. But what I'm saying is, is these templates and this structure coupled with a, with a mock-up flows as quickly as possible and gets you to the result you want. Okay, that's what I wanted to follow up on. The point being, you need to get buy-in that they will not be reviewing just textual statements. That was it. Ex Crazy. Thank you, Dan. And with that, it looks like we're running out of time, so we would like to thank you again, Dan, for presenting your second session. A reminder, if you haven't grabbed the links, it's going to be posted on our website within two business days. You can also register for Dan's third session and also watch the first session, which is archived and, po and posted on the Modern Analyst modernanalyst.com website. Dan, thank you so much for such a great presentation. We'd also like to thank everyone for attending tonight's session. Uh, and this concludes our event for today. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers, everyone.